Idaho True Believers, we've got another video today. I found another folder of videos that I had not made into a finished product yet, and I think it is worth sharing because this is from October 2018. Now, most people see DeSmet June, July, and August, so to see it in an off time, I think, is pretty interesting. And this particular trip came about because a friend of mine was taking a class and had to be in Sioux Falls. So I, she let me drop her off early in the morning, but really wanted me there to pick her up by, I can't remember if it was 5 or 5.30. But anyway, uh, so I dropped her off and hurried up to Brookings. Uh, which you'll see just briefly in the video, then on to DeSmet, and went around and stopped at all the little places that I could. Now, sadly, I did not remember to call and ask about getting uh, time set up to actually go in the buildings, but I did a lot of outdoor stuff, and after where most of my video ends, I think I was starting to what time is it? Uh, I stopped at the Loftus store, which you'll see a little bit of at the beginning. Uh, I go and have lunch with my friend Jenny Todd, who then ran the Prairie Manor bed and breakfast, and now it's under new owners. And then went out to the Ingalls Homestead, which there are like hardly any pictures, and it's because I was looking at my watch, I need this much time to get there. And as it was, I got there a little late, but um, I wouldn't have gone it on if it hadn't been for my friend Cindy, so I appreciate her uh, having me go with and split expenses. And I had a really nice time seeing uh, Desmet in October, so I hope you enjoy it too. Well, I'm pretty literally on the road again. Do you recognize this McDonald's? If it helps, there's this great park across the street. And in case you don't know, I'm in Brookings, South Dakota. All right, I'm on a new camera system, so hopefully I've got this figured out and I'll be able to start doing trip diaries again. And uh, I gave up. I didn't, I was willing to stand out the cold to shoot the park. Um, but uh, I didn't think you could hear anything with the wind. In Brookings, there are a lot of things to do, uh, including, uh, well, probably the best thing is the art museum featuring Harvey Dunn's work, the largest collection in the world which of his work, which if you are familiar with Laura, you will realize, or you should know, that Harvey Dunn was Grace Ingalls' nephew by marriage, and he is a very famous illustrator and artist. He was so famous, he has his own stamp. He was also one of, I think, six artists chosen to officially document World War I. Really cool guy, really great art. The children's illustrator, Paul Goebel, also has a collection there. Uh, the Ag Museum is fantastic as far as my normal iced tea report. There I am again. Uh, and I am stopping at this particular McDonald's because McDonald's, you get large drinks for a dollar and they have brewed iced tea. So as far as I have experimented in Brookings, which is definitely not as far as I have in like Smet, this McDonald's is the best iced tea in town, and that is your iced tea report. Hello, and I've made it to Desmet. Here I am by the shores of Silver Lake. It also is one of the most changeable things in Desmet. It's a prairie pothole lake, which means the water just comes from rain, not from a river or a spring or anything like that. So uh, in wet years, it's full like it is in this video. And in dry years, it's almost empty. So uh, this is what a wet year looks like at Silver Lake. I am at the surveyor's house. Now, sadly, it's closed today, but at least I get some shots of the outside. And even if there aren't leaves around, there are uh, certainly shadows there. 
a different place. Well, it looks like if I'd been here in September, I would be fine. But in October, you have to do more than email two weeks ahead. You have to call, and you should do it as early as possible. This is the Wilder Land north of town. It's the Rose Wilder Lane birthplace. And this was the time I found actual cattle on the a lot instead of it being a row crop or hay ground, which it normally is. It's being used as pasture. And I really like having the footage, so I'm glad I can share it. And right up the road is the tree claim that Lauren Almanzo had. And then I am heading out to the cemetery. It is Prairie Avenue. Follow down that road. Future Sarah here cutting in. Uh, I just wanted to say, I think from this cemetery footage, it looks like I was already thinking about my Where to Drive and Why series. Keep following the road until it comes to a T. When it does, you'll turn right. Again, future Sarah. Uh, the reason I didn't break it out is because I think that this area will change a lot before I get back there. And I think it maybe already has. So I There's just wanted to keep it here. as part of this trip and, and not its own to the right, separate video. You will see the wooded cemetery completely surrounded by trees at the top of the hill. As you continue up the gravel road, you eventually get to a sign that says Ingalls Gravesides, though it's usually hidden by the tree. Keep going to the very last road of the cemetery on the top of the hill. The second sign is easier to see. This is the road at the top of the hill where you turn left. Follow it around. place to stop is well marked at the top of the hill and you can pull off over to the side. If you pull past the Ingalls graves, there is a windmill on the left hand side. On the right hand side, just over the cusp of the hill, is a memory garden with a waterfall and it's a lovely place to stop. Paw's stone was the original marker for the site. It was, however, a headstone. These are footstones next to it, and they eventually moved Paws up to fall in line with the others. The Laura Ingalls Wilder Memorial Society started in DeSmet soon after Laura's death. One of their first actions was to put up stones. Following around the circle and down to the end of the sidewalk is Grace and her husband's grave. I have yet to find out who does it, but there's always a potted plant of flowers by the grave, a different one every year.
on up the hill. The memory garden. And on out the lower road. Many other people who were either mentioned in the books or involved in setting up the Memorial Society are also buried here, including Audrey Sherwood, who is probably the leading voice in preserving Laura's legacy in Smet and making sure things are like they are today. If you've never been into Smed, a great place to start, at least during the summer, is the Wilder Welcome Center. It not only gives you information about all the Wilder connections around town, they also offer van tours. Thank <laughs> you.